Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and today I'm going to show you a, a Nevis with a fun little twist that's kind of an interesting finding we see from time to time. This is a pedunculated lesion in the axilla, and it was thought clinically to represent a skin tag, except that it was inflamed and, and uh, painful to the patient. Okay, and you can see it's pedunculated, it's got a bulging shape, and here's where the base of the lesion is. Here's the underlying skin right over here, all right? And you, pedunculated things usually have, uh, this is the lowest power I can go, usually have this shape. They have kind of a, uh, they make a, a nodule that's completely surrounded or almost completely surrounded by epidermis. That usually means that you're dealing with something that's pedunculated or polypoid coming off of the skin surface. So for, for beginners in pathology, now you know that. If we look in here, we can see that in the dermis there are nests of melanocytes. And as they go from up by the... Uh, in the superficial dermis near the epidermis, they're a little bit more epithelioid, and they trickle out and get smaller and get more kind of um, single cells as we go deeper, and that's called maturation, and you can watch my normal basic, uh, melanocytic basics nevus video, I'll put a link down below, uh, to learn more about how to tell uh, the features of benign nevi. All right, so the reason I'm showing you this otherwise boring looking nevus, um, uh, intradermal, uh, nevi sometimes get pedunculated and look uh, clinically like skin tags. Uh, but this one was interesting because it was painful. So we have a couple findings here. First of all, there are blood vessels that are dilated. They're either blood vessels or lymphatics, maybe lymphatics. They've got some lymph-like fluid, but they're markedly dilated here. Now, in nevi, there is a, this pseudovascular change you can have where the cells fall apart, but that's not what's going on here. These are true vessels that are dilated, that are lined by endothelium. You can see that the epidermis has reactive hyperplasia, pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, we call that, reactive change. And it's a little bit like kenified here. There's a thickening of the corneal layer and the granular layer. So why is all these, why are these changes happening? And look right here, there's actually the nevus is being replaced by scar and granulation tissue. There are reactive spindle distillate myofibroblasts in here, and there are some lymphocytes and eosinophils and collagen bundles and uh, kind of scar tissue and granulation tissue replacing the nevus. Well, this is a case where even though we're not told the story, we can figure out the story. This is what's happened. Right here is the finding. This would be where the stalk of the, um, the, the lesion is, the, the kind of stalk that connected the pedunculated nevus down to the, um, the underlying skin. And you can see there's scar in the dermis underneath. There's scar within the polyp. And there's reactive changes of the epidermis on both sides. And the reason is this. See all this material in here? We have two different things. Number one, these are hair shafts right here. That is a hair shaft made of keratin. And usually you can t tell, let's see if we can get it to show. If you look, you can see little tiny um, uh, remnants of the, uh, the uh, squished uh, nuclei of the keratinocytes that created the hair shaft. They're dead now, but you can see that. And then also sometimes you can see little specks of melanin and that's why hair has color. So this is a hair shaft. And there's not just one. Sometimes you can see one incidental hair shaft, but there are multiple. Here's a piece. There's more up here. So there's multiple hair shafts, and they're mixed in with fibrin, pink fibrin, and blood, and debris. And oh, wait, what's this stuff? This stuff is also uh, thin, elongated, filamentous uh, structures. See, if you cut them in cross-section, they look like circles. And if you cut longitudinally, they look more like elongated shafts. But this is not hair. If you can kind of see here, this is, it's hard to get it to show up on a video, but these are refractile and they are not hair shafts, they're totally clear in the middle. And if we put in a polarizer, look what happens. They polarize under, under polarized light, they glow. And let's go to low power and they're everywhere here. There's tons of them. So many of you, if you've seen this before, you'll know what it is. Look at how many there are. This patient took some of her hair and tied it around the stalk. She probably thought it was a skin tag. She tied it around the stalk or the base of the nevus to try to strangulate it and make it fall off. Um, patients do that sometimes. They'll tie string or hair around skin tags. And what will happen is you'll get this ulceration and fibrin uh, at the base or the stalk of the, ta the skin tag. And um, then you'll have a bunch of degeneration changes and dilated vessels. And eventually, you can even get infarction and, and necrosis of the tag itself. Well, the same thing can happen to polypoid uh, nevi like this. So it's a really nice example here. The patient, I think, probably tried hair and it didn't work. And then went back with some synthetic uh, yarn or 
or string or thread and tried to tie that around it. And once it got painful, came into the doctor uh, and had the dermatologist biopsy it. So just a really nice example. Um, I usually just mention this in, um, in the comment. Uh, to explain to the dermatologist or the clinician in case in case the patient didn't tell them that they did this to let them know this is why the this lesion suddenly became painful inflamed irritated uh, sometimes they can look kind of scary uh, clinically because they can be hemorrhagic or they can get ischemic and turn kind of pale color but in any case all of a sudden change and that's due to ischemia and eventually infarction of the nevus or the um, the skin tag. So again, it only happens really with polypoid lesions like uh, skin tag, and that's where we see it most, but also sometimes in nevi. So a uh, nice example of a partially strangulated uh, polypoid intradermal nevus. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, click like and add any comments or questions you have down below. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel.